Hi! Good afternoon, everyone! Good afternoon! Alright! Miss Donna here. I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm so sorry that I couldn't meet you today. And by now, I guess you know the reason why, right? I already messaged you. And because I don't want you to get late in our lesson, I decided to create a video. And uh, please watch intently and uh, bring out your notebooks in MAPE and uh, jot down important information from the presentation from the video. Is that okay? All right. That is also in preparation for our quiz when I get back and, of course, for our quarterly assessment by the end of October. So we'll just have a re review, no? Pagbalik ko, and then we'll immediately proceed to our quiz. So my question is, are you guys ready to listen? Are you ready to listen? Okay, if you're ready to listen, please sit properly. All right, so to begin our lesson for today, um, let us have first an opening prayer. So let us bow our heads and feel the presence of our Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. Help us to focus our hearts and our minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen to the lesson. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Once again, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all ready for today's discussion. Are you ready? Ready. So we're already done with uh, PE and health. We already had our quiz in health, right? And then, um, para sa aking uh, diligence, justice, and wisdom, nakapag-start na din tayo sa arts. But for courage and honesty, I'm so sorry, um, class, hindi pa tayo nakapag-start. So, today, we'll start our discussion with arts para makahabol yung dalawa. So, wisdom, diligence, and justice, just listen. And then, um, I know we're done with the elements of arts. And later in this video, we will um I will discuss the principles of arts. Okay, all right. So to begin, allow me to show these paintings, these pictures for, for um courage and honesty. Okay, so courage and honesty. Are you familiar with these paintings? I know you're very familiar with these paintings because these are very popular. These are the most popular paintings in the world. So what? is this on my left that is that's correct that is mona lisa and that is painted by who yes correct by leonardo da vinci so any list of most famous paintings wouldn't be it would be incomplete without to mention the name of mona lisa again this was painted by leonardo da vinci next on my upper left is the what is this the starry night that's correct so, this was painted by Vincent van Gogh. So, Vincent van Gogh has painted countless well-known pieces. However, his painting Starry Night is widely considered to be his magnum opus. When we say magnum opus, this is the most important, the most popular art he have ever created. And the last one at the bottom left is all right, that is entitled The Scream. So using oil and pastel on cardboard, um, Edvard Munch painted his famous piece, The Scream. So again, that is entitled The Scream, and it, this was painted um, last 1893. So class, by looking at it, have you ever wondered how the artist decided to begin making it? What have you noticed to these paintings? Yes, it has color. It has line. All right. So all art class, whether two-dimensionals like these paintings or three-dimensionals like sculptures, contains one or more of the elements and principles. Now, my question is, are you familiar with these elements and principles of arts? Okay, so that would be our topic for today. We will be talking about the elements and principles of arts in Western and classical periods. And these are our objectives. Number one, 
we will analyze art elements and principles in the production of work following the style of a Western and classical art. So this will be our um, objective for today's video. But as we go on to our discussion, we will also identify distinct characteristics of arts during the different art periods. And of course, um, the representative artists from various art periods. All right. So to um, figure out the elements and principles of arts, um, supposedly we will have this activity, crossword challenge. Tapos na po ang wisdom, ang diligence and justice, no? So hindi na natin ito gagawin. And I'm so sorry, my honesty and courage, um, we can no longer do this. Siguro pagbalik ko na lang, um, let's just skip this and immediately proceed to our discussion. So we can shorten the video, no? Para hindi naman kayo mainis. So allow me just to, um, to skip the slides. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's start our discussion with the elements of art. So when we say element class, your keyword is basic because these are the basic elements that are used by artists in creating art. And they are what you use to create an aesthetically pleasing work, no? Because when we make art, we need to understand and apply these seven elements of arts. Yes, we have seven elements of art. And what is the first one? Okay, so class, I am now introducing some paintings, um, artworks, masterpieces from the from different periods in Western and classical periods. And this is the first example. So this um painting is what we call the shop of a dead mind. All right. Again, that is a shop of a dead mind. And this is an example of cave painting. Again, ito po ay halimbawa ng cave painting during the Paleolithic era. Ibig sabihin, this was painted on the walls and ceilings of Lascaux Cave. Again, kaya po ito ay nakalagay dito, Cave of Lascaux. Because this was painted on the walls and ceilings of Lascaux Cave in France. All right. So what do you think is the prominent or element here in this painting? Ano kaya yung dominant element? What do you think? That's four letters. All right. We have line that is correct. So when we say line class, that is an element of art which is defined by a point moving in space. All right. Again, the first element of art is line. And line starts up as a point. Nagsisimula daw ito bilang tuldok. And then when we draw a line or a little point, for example, in the board, just imagine it. And that point starts to move like that. Um, it now becomes a line. As simple as that. And we have different types of line. The, because line comes in different sizes and variations. Pakisulat sa notebook, number one. We have vertical, vertical line. No? Pag sinabing vertical, patayo. Next, we have horizontal. Kapag sinabi natin horizontal, pahiga naman yung line. Next, we also have number three is zigzag. All right? Zigzag. Number four is diagonal. No? And the last one is curve. Again, we have five basic lines. Number one, vertical. Number two, horizontal. Number three, zigzag. Number four, diagonal. And number five, curve. All right. So, for example, in this painting, sa picture po na ito, the prominent line is curve line. All right. Next, let's proceed to this one. Oh, what is this? Yes, this is the Pyramid of Giza. So, class, saan makikita ang mga pyramids? All right, so Egypt, that is correct. So class, the pyramids of Giza are the largest and most recognizable pyramid structures in the world. So they were built in honor uh, to honor certain pharaohs of the fourth ruling dynasty of Egypt during a period known as the Old Kingdom. All right, so ginagawa daw po ang pyramid in honor sa mga pharaoh. When we say pharaoh, P-H-A-R-A-O-H, they are the, what? The rulers, the kings during the old kingdom sa Egypt. Ano? And what do you think is the most dominant element in this structure? Yes, that is what we call shape. That's correct. 
So what is a shape? So when we say shape, that is a flat enclosed area that has two dimensions. When I say two dimensions, class, it has length and height and length and width. And then artists also use geometric and organic shapes. Oh, pakilagay sa notebook. There are two types of shapes. Number one is geometric and number two is organic. When we say geometric, these are the shapes we use in math. No, we are using the math principle like square, rectangle, um, what else? Triangle, circle. These are the geometric shapes. But when we say organic shapes, these are curvilinear in nature. Ibig sabihin, we are using curved lines, right? Parang mga dahon, nature, animal. So, it has something to do with nature, with the environment. And we are using curved lines. That's organic lines. All right. So again, if an area is enclosed and it has height and width, it is considered as a shape. All right. Next, this one. What do you think is this? Okay. So this is the bust of Nefertiti. Now, class, what is the bust? What is a bust? B-U-S-T. Okay, when we say vast, that is the upper part of your body. The upper part of the body from your shoulder up to your head. And this one is Nefertiti. Now, who is Nefertiti? Nefertiti class is a, a great royal wife. Again, she is a great royal wife of an Egyptian pharaoh. Siya po ay asawa ng isang Egyptian ruler, ng isang leader. And Nefertiti has become one of the most famous women of the ancient world and an icon of feminine beauty. Alright? And anong elements of arts ang dominant kay, kay Nefertiti? Okay, so that is form. Bakit kaya form? Because it is three-dimensional, right? It has length, it has width, and it has Height. So when we say form class, these are the objects that are three-dimensional, having length, having weave, and height, all right? And uh, they can be viewed from many sides, and form takes up space and value, okay? Again, a form has three dimensions, no? It could end making it 3D. Again, it has three dimensions, length, width, and height, making it 3D or Three-dimensional. Okay. Next. Okay. So, if you notice in this um painting, although this is two-dimensional, pero merong illusion, no? Na ginamit, making it three-dimensional. Kasi in arts, yung length po, yun ay tinatawag nating depth, no? Um, in arts, we are creating depth by adding what? Um value or color through light all right that is form next is this one what do you think is this one all right that is the tomb of the diver so what do you mean by tomb what is that in tagalog tomb is starts with letter p that is puntod okay ibig sabihin po nung unang panahon nagpipaint din ang sila sa puntod so Bakit natin ginagawa ang pagpipaint sa puntod? What is their purpose? Okay, again class, this is an example of the tomb painting. Okay, tomb painting. Ibig sabihin, pagpipaint sa puntod. And the purpose of to tomb paintings was to create a pleasant afterlife for the dead person. So the origin of this tomb is somewhat mysterious, but it was painted during the Greek period. So, what do you think is the most dominant element of arts in this painting? What do you think? Alright, that is correct. Space. Kasi marami siyang space class. Look at the um objects. Maliliit yung objects, right? Pero yung most dominant, ang pinakamalaking nakikita natin ay space. Alright. So, what is space? A space class is used to create the illusion of depth. Space can be two-dimensional and it can be negative or positive space. All right. So class, um, we have two types of again, we have two types of space. We have positive space and negative space. So positive space class, it refers to areas where the object is or the subject is positioned. 
Again, positive space refers to the areas where the subject is positioned. Well, the negative space is the area surrounding the object. Or in other words, para ma mas maintindihan ninyo, ang um, positive space, that is the main focus area. Okay? Again, that is the main focus, ang um, positive space. So, ano nakikita niyo dito sa positive space? Ano ang main subject? Di ba ang main subject natin is a vase? Sa kabila, ang nakikita natin is what? Two faces, right? Alright, so again, when we say positive space, that is the main focus area. Well, negative space is just the background, okay? Parehas po, ito ang focus natin dito ay vase. Pero kapag tinignan mo yung negative space, ang, ma ang mas mapapansin natin ay yung background, alright? So for example, this one is the most famous positive and negative space solutions. So take right half of the of the image and think about if you see number one a vase or number two letter B two faces. So the ba our initial observation was a vase, and to see the vase, our mind must assume that the black area is the negative space and the white area is the positive space. Now, if you see the two faces, then you are assuming that the white area is negative space. And the black area is the positive space, no? So, um, the point here, class, is the positive and negative space is to some extent subjective. Ito po ay subjective, no? Depende sa nakakakita. This illusion is an extreme demonstration of the differences in two perceptions. So, most of the time, the positive and negative space will be obvious and everyone will see the same thing. But again, this is subjective. Again, ulitin ko, pag sa positive space, yan yung nai-imagine nyo yung main focus. No? Main focus, the main subject area. Well, negative space is just the background surrounding the area. That is positive and negative space. How about this one? Let's proceed to the next one. This is? The Judgment of Paris. So, napansin natin, class, di ba, noong unang panahon, may nagpipaint sa cave, may rin nagpipaint sa puntod, and may rin ding nagpipaint sa mga bay. So, ibig sabihin, class, the Judgment of Paris painting is a type of earthenware, a pottery, an Aztec black figure on Pora, named for the sin depicted on it. Ano ba yung sin dito? So, ano ba yung nandyan sa painting? So, nakikita nyo, may tatlong babae dyan because the Judgment of Paris was a contest between the three most beautiful goddesses of Olympus. Who are the three most beautiful beautiful goddesses of Olympus? Who are these goddesses? Diba? We have Aphrodite, we have Hera, and Athena. So ito po yan. Sila po yan tatlo. No? Again, this is a contest between the three most beautiful goddesses. Kung sino ang pinaka maganda. And what do you think is the element of art that is dominant or prominent in this uh, painting? All right, we have value. So let's see, bakit value ang dominant element of art? Because class, when we say value, we are talking about the degrees of lightness and darkness. Okay, again, that is the degrees of lightness and darkness. Um, it is directly created and affected by a light source. So take this for example, this painting, no? So sa tingin nyo, nasaan kaya nanggagaling ang light? When we say light source, that is the location from where the light is coming from. And depending on where the light is coming from, the, sur the surface of an object just like this may be light or dark. So sa tingin nyo, saan nanggagaling ang light source dito? Sa left ba or sa right? Alright, sa right, kasi mas maliwanag yung nasa left side niya. Ibig sabihin, mas malapit siya sa liwanag. So that is value. Again, just the, the degrees of lightness and darkness. How about this one? Alright, this one is The Lady and the Unicorn of Tapestry. Yan po ang title ng painting na yaan. And, and uh, what do you mean by tapestry? That's my first question. What do you mean by tapestry? Are you familiar with the term tapestry? Have you heard about that word before? What do you think? All right. When we say tapestry class, that is a form of textile art. Ibig sabihin sa tela po ginagawa. Ano? This is a form of textile art traditionally woven by 
hand. And the lady and the unicorn tapestries are considered to be some of the greatest surviving masterpieces of medieval European art. And ano ang prominent or dominant element of art na ginamit dito? What do you think? Yes, we have color. Diba? Nangingibabaw ang kulay. Okay, so what is color? So class, color is one of the most dominant element. It is also created by light, just like the value. And there are three properties of color. Again, how many properties of colors are there? There are three. And what are those? We have U, value, and intensity. Oh, pakisulat sa notebook, value, U, intensity. Now, what is the difference between the three? Oh, let's start with the U. As you can see, meron tayo dito kulay red, yellow, and blue. Because when we say U, H-U-E, that is the purest form of a color. And that is the name of the color itself. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin U, ito mismo yung kulay. Like red, yellow, orange, blue, green. Now, ano naman ang value? Okay? So when we say value class, that is the lightness or darkness of a color. And that is used to make objects look like three-dimensional. Because again, that refers to a, the lightness or darkness of a color. And it defines a color in terms of how close it is to white or black. Okay? Again, it defines a color Depende kung gaano siya kalapit sa white or black. No, The lighter the color, ibig sabihin kapag light ang color, the, the closer it is to white. And the darker the color, just like this on my left, the closer it is to black. Yun lang po ang value. So ano naman ang difference niya sa intensity? When we say intensity class, this is the brightness or darkness of a color. Again, kapag value, the lightness or darkness. Pag intensity, the brightness or dullness of a color. And it creates the illusion of depth. Because intensity, pakisulat sa notebook, ang intensity po ay tinatawag din natin chroma or saturation. Again, intensity is also called chroma. C-H-R-O-M-A and saturation. S-A-T-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. You're familiar with saturation, right? Ginagamit niyo yan sa TLE niya, sa PowerPoint. Um, a color as we see it on a color wheel, di ba? Kung nakakakita kayo ng color wheel, um, the, it is at full in intensity. Ibig sabihin, very bright. Just like this one. Very yellow. Ibig sabihin, kapag uh, full intensity, no? Very bright ang kular, kulay. But when we mix it with gray, it becomes dull. And kapag mix natin siya with gray, tinatawag na natin siyang low intensity. Nagiging dull yung kulay. Alright? That is intensity. Again, what are the three types of color variations? We have hue, value, and intensity. Now, let's proceed to the next one. What do you think is this? Okay, so this is the Venus of Willendorf. And this is an 11.1 centimeter tall or 4.4 4. 4 inches Venus figurine. Alright, so ito po ay isang figurine and it is estimated to have been made around 25,000 to 30,000 years ago. So Venus figurine po is, uh, um, it portrays a woman. So kung nakikita nyo, mukha siyang babae, di ba? It's like a woman because it is portraying a woman and usually curved in the round. Alright, so ito po ay ginawa during the Paleolithic era also. Again, this is Venus figurine. And by looking at it, what have you noticed? Diba? Medyo rough siya, no? By looking at it, parang very rough yung texture. So this one is, the element of art use is texture. Alright, so what is texture? So when we say texture, it, descri it describes the feel of an actual surface. So the surface quality of an object, um, that is texture. Okay? Um... What else? So, for example, here, the painting, no? Um, to give us the illusion na it's rough. Okay? So, yung dahon, parang ginagawa nilang um, 3D, three-dimensional. And they are putting, for example, squiggly lines or ginagawa nilang medyo rough yung pagkakadrawing para magkaroon ng texture. By, looking, by, by just looking at it, though hindi natin na kikit na hahawakan 
pero by just looking at it, nalalaman natin na meron siyang texture. For example, very rough. For example, very smooth. So that's what we call texture. Now, we're done with the elements of art. Again, we have seven elements of art. We have line, shape, face, form. Um, What else? Texture. Okay. And color. Oh, don't forget color. Next, let's proceed to the principles of art. So we have here six principles of arts. And when we say principles, kung ang elements, these are, the, these are the basics. When we say principles, these are the standards, the rules to be observed by artists in creating works of art. Again, these are the rules and standards, the principles. So this is the first one. So this painting is entitled Griffin and Arimis, Arimas. Yan, Arimaspian. Okay. Take two. So this is what we call Griffin and Arimaspian. So Arimaspian class, itong nasa horse that is a, a, a warrior, no? He is a warrior na nakikipaglaban sa isang griffin. Ito po ang griffin. Ang griffin po is a, a half lion, half eagle um, na animal, no? And this is a creature of myth with the head and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion. Okay, so what do you think is the principles of art used in this painting? Ano yung pinaka-dominant? Tingnan nyo itong um, circle dito. Itong round sa... Alright, so look at this. Just look at the um the pattern used. Okay, so di ba mayroong repetition and that is what we call pattern. So pag nagre-repeat tayo ng element, that is what we call pattern, just like this one. So when we say pattern, that is the repetition of a specific visual element such as a unit of shape or form. No, That is a method used to organize surfaces in a consistent, regular manner. Again, ang tatandaan lang po when we say pattern, that is a repetition of an element or repetition of an object. Sometimes, yung pattern, it's not everything. Kagaya nito, um, as you can see, there is a repetition, no? Minsan, kagayang-kagaya, yung mga elements or objects, minsan naman hindi. May malaki, may maliit. But, yeah, again, sometimes, it's, uh, it's uh, everything is not exactly the same, but there's definitely a pattern going on. Alright? So, that is pattern. Again, the, just the repetition of elements and objects. Next, this one. What do you think is this? So this is class an example of an Egyptian painting. In Egyptian art class, the size of a figure indicates its relevance or its relative importance. Um, for example, di ba may nakikita kayong malalaki na figure, tapos mayroong maliliit, and may mas maliit pa sa ilalim, no? So yan, mayroong what? What principle of art is dominant in this painting? Okay, meron po siyang contrast. So, bakit nagkaroon ng contrast? Kasi class in Egyptian art, the size of a figurine, again, it indicates relative importance. This means that uh, yung malalaki na figure, these are the gods and the pharaoh. Followed by figures na medyo mas maliit sa kanila and these are the high officials, the tomb owners. And itong maliliit sa ilalim at the bottom part, that is the smallest figures and this were the servants, the entertainers, the animals, the trees, and architectural details. So yun po. Ibig sabihin kas, um, there is an arrangement of opposite elements sa um, painting na ito. Tama? Diba? Kas bakit merong uh, opposite elements? For example, in this painting, we're talking about the size. Merong malaki, merong maliit. And that's what we call Contrast. So when we say contrast class, that is the arrangement of opposite elements. For example, light versus dark. That's uh, it has something to do with the color and value. Rough versus smooth, and small versus large, and etc. And a composition so as to create visual interest. So the principle of art class, or the principle of contrast, is a juxtaposition that accentuates differences. What do you mean by that? Meaning we are putting two separate things or concepts together. We are putting two different, two separate elements together in order to create a contrast. And this can uh, often done with the color, just like this one, no? Kung dark itong ibang color, of course, kailangan natin ng pambasag ng contrast, and that is the yellow color, the bright yellow color, no? So this is contrast in color, a difference in light and color. This one is a contrast in size, 
Okay, this one naman is a difference in texture. We have rough textured here and smooth texture. And again, we have a difference in light and color and even the line used just like in the flower painting. All right, so that is contrast. Next, how about this one? This is a rose window from the North Transept. So this is a rose window class and this is used as a generic term applied to a circular window but it's especially used for those found in Gothic cathedrals and churches. So ito po yung mga bintana no? na nakikita natin sa mga cathedrals, sa mga simbahan. And what do you think is the dominant principles of art used in this um, work of art? Alright, so nakikita ninyo meron po yung okay, balance. So, bakit balance? Let's see. What do you mean by balance? So, when we say balance, that is a way of combining elements to add a feeling of equilibrium or stability no? to a work of art. So, there are two major types of balance. We have symmetrical and asymmetrical. Pakisulat po. Two types of balance. Number one, symmetrical. S-Y-M-M-E-T-R-I-C-A-L. And asymmetrical, A -S -Y -M -M -E -T -R -I -C -A -L. Okay, so when we say uh, balance, that is the distribution of equal visual weight. And um, just like this one, okay, the merong equal visual weight. And what's important to note is that it doesn't mean it has to be a mirrored image. Hindi naman kagaya nito na a uh, mirror, no? Na super balance. Kasi nga, meron tayong tinatawag na asymmetrical balance and um, symmetrical balance. So, what is symmetrical balance? Just like this one, no? This first examples are symmetrical balance images where you could almost fold your paper and have the same thing on each side. Ibig sabihin, magkagayong magkagaya yung parehas na side. Kahit i-fold mo yung paper, parang isang object lang yung magagaw, makikita mo. Because there is a balance, symmetrical balance. So when we say a symmetrical balance, naman, it means that the two halves of the work of art are different. However, they are different. However, they are also trying to create a balance. All right. For example, class, the most um prominent example of balance, <clears throat> excuse me, is our face. Okay, our face po natin, di ba? Hindi naman tayo si Angelina Jolie para maging symmetrical ang face. Kung symmetrical ang face mo, I'd be good for you. Pero most of us, we are, uh, yung face natin, it's asymmetrical. Um, hindi siya balance, no? Pero our face is trying to create an illusion of balance. Okay, so that is asymmetrical. Next, how about this one? Aside from um, balance, the most dominant element here is what? What do you think? Oh, ano ang napapansin natin dito sa painting? Sino lang ang may halo? When we say halo, ito yung round na nakapalibot dyan sa ulo. Diba? Ito lang, ibig sabihin, mayroong ini-emphasize. So, the most dominant element here in the court of Empress Hidora is emphasis. Alright? Okay. So, the uh, Empress Hidora no, is a mosaic panel that is located in Basilica in Ravenna, Italy. Again, ito po ay mosaic panel, mosaic, na matatagpuan sa Italy, sa simbahan sa Italy. Okay, so sino po ba si Theodora? Si Theodora po, ito yung may halo. And siya yung ina-emphasize dito, no? And she was um the uh, she was the wife of Emperor Justinian the First and was serving as the East Roman or who was serving um as the East Roman or Byzantine emperor at um the time of at, at their time. So history also honors Theodora almost as much as her husband because um you know some are saying that. She has a great contribution to the greatness of her husband, um, Emperor Justinian the First. So again, this is the court of the Empress Theodora, and the most dominant element is emphasis. So what is emphasis? So when we say uh, emphasis class, we are using um, or we are making certain parts of an artwork stand out. Okay, pinagsa stand out natin yung isang part ng object. 
it creates the center of interest or focal point. No, for example, in this in this painting. So alin ba dyan ang focal point? Alin ang center of an interest? The buy yung green tomato or apple or whatever it is. Because it has different color. And dahil meron siyang different color, ka, hindi kagaya ng mga nakapalibot sa kanya, we are creating the illusion of emphasis. Okay? That is emphasis. So, an artist, for example, just like this one, they use this color very often uh, when trying to employ this principle of design. So, color, the shape, the size, and placement are just some ways to emphasize, emphasize part of an art piece. So again, this is emphasis. These are also example of emphasis. Ayan pa po. Again, gumagamit tayo ng color para mag-emphasize ng mga objects. No? How about this one? I think this is the last one. Huh? What do you think is the dominant principles of art used in this um, structure. This is uh, the Discobolus of Myron, and uh, this is an ancient Greek sculpture. This is a sculpture completed at the start of the classical period at around 400 to 460 to 450 BC. And the sculpture depicts a youthful male athlete. He is an athlete throwing a discus. When we say discus, D I S C U S. As you can see, that is a, just a heavy disc, no? Ito ay sport po, no? And this is a sculpture. So, ano sa tingin ninyo ang um, principles of art na dominant sa sculpture na ito? Okay, that is correct. That is movement. Pakisulat, movement, no? So, ang movement, it sounds very exciting, no? It's like dancing because dance itself, no, is an art. It, it is an art entirely based on movement. Ang pagsasayaw, again, that is an art form um, entirely based on movement. And visual art uses movement too, but in a different way. No? Visual movement is the principle of art used to create the impression of action in a work of art. So when we say movement, that is the, um, the past, the flow, or the suggestion of movement, which causes our eyes to follow in an intended direction, just like this one, di ba? Um, it shows a flow, a path, a movement, which causes our eyes to follow in an intended direction. And it utilizes shapes, colors, lines, and arrangements in space to create the illusion. For example, our paintings, the bad this one, this painting, it cannot physically move, but we can paint in a way which gives the illusion or suggestion of movement, just like this one. So this typically again involves arranging the shapes in a way which leads the viewer uh, from one point to the next in your painting or using certain techniques with your brush to mimic the movement. So perhaps plus the best example of movement in art, so these are also example, though this is two-dimensional, this is just a painting, pero we feel like it's moving because of the brush strokes, of the brush techniques, right? So I guess perhaps the best example of movement um, in art, or at least the most famous, is, a bus, uh, is Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night, which takes your eyes on a roller coaster around all the twists and swirls and swirls all right so may mga twists and swirls diba because um of the brush strokes no may mga curve lines it's like it feels like it's moving so yes this is the most famous um painting Vincent van Gogh the starry night na nagutilize ng movement no kasi diba when we think of the starry night by looking at it the first thing which comes to our mind is the uh, the swirling bash, brush stroke, which creates a sense of movement in the sky. All right. So we're done with um, movement. We're, 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 the next one is, we're moving to this one. Okay. So this is the head of Alexander. So this is a mosaic. And the Alexander mosaic is believed to be a copy of a Hellenistic Greek painting made during the 4th century BC. So the style of the mosaic is distinctly Greek. So, and it depicts close-up portraits of the main heroes of the battle. So, if you guys are familiar with Alexander the Great, ito po yun. He was an ancient Macedonian ruler and one of the history's greatest military minds and a powerful military leader. Again, that is Alexander the Great. And in here, we're using unity. 
when we say unity class, as you can see, uh, pinagsama-sama po ang lahat ng elements no, to create a visually pleasing artwork. So that is unity. So unity uh, can be very subtle but done well. No? A unified artwork will just look right, complete, and pleasing. At yan ang tinatawag nating unity. Kapag go, this or the visually pleasing arrangement among the elements in the design and it is a, a feeling that everything in the work of art works together and look like it fits. All right. Um, unity is difficult to define, no? But uh, it, this can be recognized, of course, because unity in art is one of the arts principles representing the sum of compositional elements. Again, Ulitin ko, when we say unity, that is the sum of compositional elements. Again, the arrangement of different pieces producing the harmonious, the balance, and complete whole. That is the best definition of unity in art. All right? Arrangement of different elements and pieces to create a balance and a harmonious and complete whole artwork or masterpiece. That is unity. Again, tandaan, pag pinagsama-sama lahat ng elements, that's what we call unity. Okay, so let's practice. Uh, this is in preparation for your quiz. Sa pagbalik ko, let's practice. No? Let's just identify ano yung mga elements and principles of arts na ginamit dito sa mga paintings na to. Number one, what do you think is the answer? Okay, that is Line. That is correct. How about in here, number two? What do you think is the answer? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's balance? Yes, that's correct. That's balance. How about this one? What do you think is that? Okay, what is the most prominent principle of art used in this painting? That is emphasis. No, we are emphasizing the woman. Next, what is this? Okay, there is a path. There, it, likes, it feels like it's moving. That is? movement how about this one there is a lightness and darkness no depending on the light that is value how about this one we are repeating some patterns or elements in an artwork that is pattern that's correct how about this one okay what do you think is this that is form because it's 3d though this is a painting this is two-dimensional but there is an illusion no because the objects used are in 3D. It has a uh, length, width, and height. That is form. How about this one? Okay, there is a feeling of roughness, no? And when we say roughness, it has something to do with the texture. How about this one? Okay, we combine two separate, the two different elements when it comes to size. Merong malaki, merong maliit. And that's what we call? Contrast. That is correct. And that ends our discussion about the elements and principles of arts. Um, on our next video, I'll be um discussing the characteristics of of uh, Western and classical arts. So I'll be posting the video maybe next meeting, and then after that, we'll immediately proceed to our quiz and of course our discussion in music. So if you have questions, class, dahil wala ako dyan to answer your questions, um, just message me. Let me know po kung mayroon kayong mga tanong. I'm one shot away. All right? Okay. So I think that ends our discussion. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And mag-ingat kayo. Ingatan ang sarili. Bye. Have a nice day.